This one hurts. I'm not gonna lie. This one, this one stings a bit. Now, this was a very back and forth game for the Mavericks. Um, they started out early on, 22-8 edge, and they had a lot of momentum going. Kristaps Porzingis got going with eight quick points. I won't have a whole lot more good to say about KP for the rest of the game. I will give him this quick tidbit. As you see behind me, he had nine rebounds. It was a strong rebounding game. It was not a game in which he got any blocked shots or anything like that, however. And so it it was a mixed bag for KP. Uh, this game was basically Luka Doncic versus the combination of LeBron and Anthony Davis. And if not for some rather questionable officiating and a just horrifically bad missed foul by Dwight Howard on Seth Curry at the end of regulation. The Lakers don't knock down a three. Danny Green, of all people, doesn't knock down a three to take it to overtime to then take the Mavericks uh, and and beat them ultimately 119-110. Now, Luka, Luka was a warrior in this game. Not only does he set a career high in assists with 15 he also records 31 points and 13 rebounds. Luka was an absolute monster in this game. Uh, at late in the game, about four or five minutes left in the fourth quarter, uh, he has a collision for a loose ball with Dorian Finney-Smith. You have Dwight Howard behind him at the time, and in the collision, Luka's head goes back, hits pretty much the crown of his head against Dwight Howard's jaw, and bust Luca open. They are speculating he'll probably need some stitches post game. But for the next probably ten to twenty minutes real time, he all, he had a little bit of a glassy look in his eye. But I I don't know, man. He 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 bounced back and he still continued to make plays. I'm sure they're gonna run him through the concussion protocol just to be safe. Uh, I, obviously, they had to have felt like he was in a good position to keep playing and to go back in. But scary moment there for Mavs fans. Luka, you know, immediately drops to the ground, clutching the back of his head. Gets popped uh, once or twice more, even when he comes back into the game. But this this game, I felt like Rick Carlisle really coached his ass off with one big exception. He never seemed to realize Dwight Powell against Anthony Davis was a mismatch. The Lakers attacked again and again, and again, and again, and again. And even down the stretch there, I mean, it, it was Anthony Davis going right at Dwight Powell, and Maxi actually had some success against Anthony Davis. I understand you got Dodo on the floor, you're going to have him on LeBron most, most of the time. Sometimes you saw him go against uh, Anthony Davis, but for the most part, Dodo stayed with LeBron. And he had pretty decent success for what you can expect uh dodo when he went against anthony davis but dwight powell had a bad game in that way the killer to me other than other than obviously that the the three-pointer in the corner by danny green at the end of regulation doesn't even happen if dwight powell makes his two free throws at the line dallas with a two-point lead goes to the line they're up 102 100 Dwight Powell gets fouled, goes to the line, back irons the first free throw, makes the second. Lakers have a timeout, so they advance it to half court. And yeah, you get that play where Danny Green is the inbounder. They get the ball to LeBron top of the key. He brings it around, drives baseline, kicks it to Danny Green. And for a moment, you're you're tearing your hair out. Like, how can Seth Curry leave him open? How could Seth Curry not keep track of the one legit three-point threat the Lakers had on the floor at the time. Well, as we saw coming into overtime, Doris Burke runs the highlight again and says, yeah, watch Dwight Howard on this back screen he sets on Curry. Curry, seeing, feeling the screen is coming, basically tries to slide around Dwight. Dwight just reaches out with both hands and grabs Curry by the waist. Curry still gets away and makes a great contest, but it's late and yeah, Danny Green knocks it down. We go to overtime and the Lakers burst out of the gates in overtime with quick baskets. Again, Anthony Davis going at Dwight Powell. And then you get a moment where Luka gets knocked down again and the refs haven't stopped play. Luka's kind of 
dazed and getting up and the Mavericks are just kind of standing around him. And so what's LeBron do? Inbound the ball, throw it down court to Anthony Davis for another quick bucket. This, this sucks in this game because this to me, you saw the moments of that young, immature team from Dallas late, I felt. This this very much felt like a team who they just went toe-to-toe with one of the best teams in the Western Conference. And similar to the Portland game, now Portland they unraveled in the last minute too, but this was different. This felt like Dallas had done enough to close the deal, to seal the deal, and then it was kind of taken from them And when faced with that adversity, rather than collecting themselves and regaining control, it felt like they just kind of let it spiral from them at that point. They were frustrated. Luka was frustrated the entire night. Like, every time Luka was getting either called for an offensive foul, like a charge, uh, he got called for pushing off a couple times in the first half, a couple uh, couple picked up in the first quarter, he just seemed like he was very kind of out of sorts. Like, he seemed very frustrated. He he rebounded the ball great in the first quarter. In the first quarter, I think he had something like six or seven boards already. And he had, like, five or six assists. Points weren't there necessarily in the first quarter. I think he had, like, five. But he got going, man. He got going in this game. And, again, it took a duo of a top ten, of two top ten players in LeBron and Anthony Davis, both playing in at the height of their powers. LeBron also gets a triple-double in the game. I, you know, I, I have it up there on the board. It was Luka's 10th career triple-double. Uh, let me throw a quick note on that real quick that I had, uh, that I had taken for that. So, Luka Doncic, with his 10th career triple-double, brings him closer to, to Jason Kidd's franchise record of 21 which Jason Kidd set during his 500-game Mavs career. To give you context, this is Luka Doncic. This was Luka Doncic's 77th game in the NBA. So Luka, 10 triple doubles in 77 career games. Yeah, he's he's burning up. He's burning up the leaderboard after Jason Kidd for the franchise record. But Luka was fantastic in this game. Like. He very much in the in the later parts of the game, really the fourth quarter and overtime in general, rather than looking for his own shot so much, he became a distributor, and he he was finding guys, man. Like he, I can't I can't count on one hand how many times there was a pick and roll set, and he just lobbed up the just perfect perfect pass for Maxi or Dwight or whoever just to just absolutely crush it just throw it down and bring the crowd up onto his feet a couple of those i swear dwight uh, on one of those dwight powell hadn't even had time to roll off of the screen and luca's like yup here you go and sure enough dwight powell chases it down and throws it down and out of the air i mean it was incredible uh he still hit some crazy step backs late in the game too luca Luca hitting his three-point shots. He was going toe-to-toe for a minute there in the third quarter. In the third quarter alone, Luka Doncic scored or assisted on 23 of Dallas's 27 points in the quarter. Now, Dallas owned a 10-point lead at half, but really the Lakers came back. And yes, a late push by Dallas at the end of the third quarter, spearheaded by Luka, allowed them to kind of wrestle back control there. But it was very much a game... That felt like it was kind of teetering at the edge of their control a little bit. Like they got on that run, and if they, you're like, okay, if they can carry this over into the start of the fourth quarter, maybe they can be all right. But it never felt like they could put LA away. And then even when it looked like they could, Dwight Powell misses the free throw. The officials miss the blatant hold by Dwight Howard that should have waved off Danny Green's game tying shot to force overtime. Dallas should have won this game 103 100, but. You know, it's the NBA. You'll get, I, I'm telling you now, you'll get something from the league tomorrow probably acknowledging that, yep, we acknowledge that was a missed foul by Dwight Howard on that pivotal play. Cool. Thanks for telling us what we already know. It doesn't change anything. It sucks, but you just have to put it behind you. Like, there's nothing else you can do. There's nothing else you can do in this situation. Uh, what also made that three-pointer by Danny Green so brutal was that 
The Lakers did not shoot the three ball well at all tonight. I know LeBron hit a few, but as a team, they only shot like 28% from three, and there was one guy you had to worry about in that situation. So it's brutal to even give him that opportunity. Uh, Dallas did shoot the three ball well late in the game, late in the fourth quarter. They were shooting still 48% from three, I think I have here. I think for the game, they wound up like 38%. But it, it's incredible. Uh, if you want absurd stats, ESPN Stats and Info says Luka Doncic is the youngest player with a triple-double against the Lakers all time. Okay. Uh, you want to get even more specific and ridiculous just to show how the entire league kowtows to LeBron's aura? Here you go. He's also the youngest player to triple-double against LeBron James all time. I, I just like to celebrate that Luka had another triple-double. I don't really give a crap about LeBron or the Lakers in this sense. But, you know, it is what it is. Let's see here. Uh, any other notes I had? There was one cool thing. I, I shared it on the community tab for the um, for the channel. Uh, and if you remember watching the channel in the off season, former coach, former Grizzlies coach Lionel Hollins, basically went on Sirius XM Radio and kind of ran his mouth about Luca, saying he's an empty stats guy. He's not a true superstar. He only he doesn't make the guys around him better. Blah, blah, blah. There was a great moment because Lionel Hollins is now an assistant coach on the Lakers, uh, as well as Jason Kidd, the franchise leader for the Mavericks and Triple Doubles, who Luke is going to be chasing and will pass potentially by the start of next year. I mean, again, he's got 10, so he would need 11 more this year. Certainly in the wheelhouse that he could get him this year, but he had eight last year. Although the first one, I think, didn't come until like game 46 or something like that. Maybe it was the second one. I digress. Lionel Holland's on the bench. There's a great moment where Luca is just tearing them apart. I think it's in the third quarter, and Luca gets a good look at Holland's on the bench, and Holland's just kind of sitting there with his chin on his hand, just like, hmm. And Luca's just staring daggers right at him. Like Luca is fully aware of who Rhino, uh, of who Lionel Holland's is, and the utter trash. Hollins had in terms of criticism of Luca, calling him nothing more than another Jason Williams or whatever. Dude, that's just insulting. Like, old fart basketball, no appreciation for it. Luca, if Luca is not, it was already a, a snub last year for Luca not to make the All Star game. If Luca's healthy, there is no chance he can't be the All Star this year. Yes, he's yet to beaten. LeBron James in his short NBA career, I think now he's 0-4 against LeBron all time. I think they played the Lakers three times last year. That's off the top of my head. Um, it might have been four, and there might just be one that's escaping my memory. But regardless, he hasn't beaten LeBron yet in his NBA career. But this was a different game from Luka. This wasn't just like, hey, late game heroics in an otherwise eh game. This was Luka rising to the occasion. And like I said, pretty much taking on one of the best duos in the NBA, a two-headed dragon for the Lakers, uh, and at times the officials even. And even though Luka's, Luka's right-hand guy, KP, wasn't there, KP disappeared pretty much after that first quarter. Yeah, he ends up with 16-9, and nine, but good God, KP was getting stripped left and right. Anthony Davis stripped him twice on one play, once from the freaking ground. Uh, another time late in the game, in overtime, KP just gets flustered uh, and throws the ball out of bounds like it's it was kind of like he was unraveling a little bit and I'm gonna keep practicing patience with KP I'm not sounding any alarms or anything like that all I will say is he started off the way he started off the game you looked at this and you were like dude KP came to play he he is amped for this matchup with Anthony Davis even though their styles are largely different he is amped for this game. He had a sweet, like, couple plays in a row. Like, Luca full court or half court bounce pass in transition to KP, who had low post established position. Just turn and shoot over the top. Nothing you can do. Then he had another time where he just got a spot up mid range jumper. Another time he just straight up got the ball, crossed AD over behind the three point line, pulled up and buried a three in his face. Like, what can you even do to guard that? Apparently, you can just get physical with him, and he'll kind of disappear. A lot of KP's damage that got him beyond those first eight points, those first quick points, came at the free throw line, it seemed like, in the fourth quarter, the second half and into the fourth quarter. 
he did not look comfortable out there. He looked very flustered. Uh, it, it's weird, weird to me how this game kind of worked out that way. It just wound up being Luca out of his mind, head bleeding, eyes a little bit glassy, and having the game of his life. Maybe not the game of his life, but just having one of the best games of his life so far. And it just, it sucked. It didn't, uh, he didn't get enough help around him. That's what it boiled down to. The Mavericks played good defense through the first half. They played damn good defense in the first half. And they played well enough that they should have won the game. They just didn't do some of the little things right. Like I said, Carlisle, I don't get why he kept going back to Dwight Powell. It's only Dwight Powell's second game back. And Dwight Powell's rust was brutal in some of these situations. Now, Luka started eventually... You can say you spoon-fed a guy and think like, oh, okay, well, you know, he, he, you're spoon-feeding him. You're making it nice and easy for him. No, Luca was basically spoon-feeding him to the degree with some of those alley-oops where he was pretty much just cramming the spoon in Dwight's mouth like, you will eat. You will make this basket. Like, I'm tired of dealing with this. Because there was, there was times where Dwight just didn't seem comfortable around the rim. Good God, in the first quarter, there was a moment where Maxi looked like he jumped out of his skin just at the sight of Anthony Davis. He got a pass deep on the block with Luca. Anthony Davis was nowhere near, but Maxi like freaked out, pivot the, pivoted the wrong way, and when he pivoted back, started to go up for a jump shot. Saw Anthony Davis, pretty much had a heart attack, nearly traveled, and then threw the ball away. And you're like, "What? Did you just have a conniption? What just happened? You're an NBA player, right? Like I know it's Anthony Davis, but good God, dude." It, it was brutal, though, uh, back to Dwight Powell. It was brutal watching him knock off some of that rust. But the, the free throw was killer at the end, and it, it sucks because it undoes what should have been. I, I was I was already in here, the little studio and everything set up. I was ready to walk in here and be like, we got it. This is an incredible victory. This is a huge moment. Now it's going to be a test for this team. They played great. They played damn good for the most part Luca, great game they played well enough to make a a serious statement but it is what it is they've played two really good teams now at home and they've lost both of them now they beat the wizards that wasn't a good team at home although the wizards have tripped up some other teams and played some other teams tough oddly early in the year but it it is what it is man here's another uh tweet from the nba central Leaders in field goal percentages on drives with a minimum of three and a half field goal attempts. Luka Doncic, 68%. 68% this year is Luka's field goal percentage on drives. That's pretty crazy. Uh, Luka, Luka, I felt like, was pretty spot on here. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that stands out to me. So overall, Luka played 38 minutes. I mentioned his, his stat line, 31-13, and a career-high 15 assists. 10 of 23 overall from the field, 4 of 9 from 3, 7 of 8 at the line, and a block. Uh, turnovers, looks like he had 6, so that's a bit high. But, you know, when you get 15 assists, hey, you're still plus 9 in that category alone. Uh, KP, not a good day. 6 of 16, 1 of 3 on 3s. That was of all, of all shots, the crossover pull-up J on Anthony Davis. And only three of six at the foul line. There you go. I've, I've kind of, I, not kind of, I've been calling out early on a couple times this year. KP at the foul line is not not great early on. I don't know. I, I feel like that's largely conditioning. But you're 7'3", you're probably not using your legs a whole lot at the foul line, obviously. But it is what it is, man. He's going to have to overcome that because... When you kind of get screwed over at the end of regulation by literally one more point would have closed the deal, you will look at plays like that and say, well, Luka missed a free throw in the fourth quarter, but I'm not going to kill Luka because look what he did for the game. Uh, KP missing some crucial opportunities there. Dorian Finney-Smith had what should have been a game winner taken away from him. Luka finds him with a brilliant drive and kick in the corner. Finney-Smith knocks down his only three on five attempts on the game. Uh, Finney-Smith played well, I thought. I didn't have any issues with him. He had three steals even. Seven points, 10 rebounds from Finney Smith. Hell yes, give me that. An assist. Three of eight shooting, one of five on three, but three steals as well. Uh, although he also had four turnovers. 
Powell, 14 points, five boards, five of eight, one of two, and three of four at the line. That one miss is monumental. Uh, here's my, and I say this as as a major fan of this guy, here is my kind of, if, if Dwight Powell is considered my in the doghouse guy of the game, or KP, I'm going to say my disappointment of the game not an earth-shattering way, but my yeah, this is a very long title game. If I'm giving or title for a, a guy of the game, if I'm giving this every single game, the guy who disappointed me a little bit in this game, and it wasn't an explode off the page disappointment, was Seth Curry. Seth Curry started for the Mavs again tonight. He started the last couple games, 23 minutes, four points, two boards, one assist, one of five shooting. He hit one three on the game, one of four, and one free throw. He did get a steal, turned it over a couple times, but Seth Curry, I don't know what it is early on. I, I had heard that he was dealing with like a cut on his hand, but man, Luca found him for some good looks in this game, and he didn't hit. Now, I don't have his field goal, perc- his three point percentage in front of me right now. He's a career 44% three point shooter. I. I have to assume that's going to skew back towards the median at this point. He's got enough years in his career where it's not like he's just magically going to bottom out. So I I have to believe that's going to correct itself, but we've started him now a couple games in a row and you know, he's had some big moments and some big shots early in this season. And that's why I love him. He's got a good clutch gene, but man, oh man, in the two games you've started him, he is not, not done a lot. Now he was, you know, he wasn't part of the 61-point bench effort in Denver because he started that game, but he played about 25 minutes and had about 10 points, which has pretty much been in line with what he's done up till now in the season. So mixed feelings for Curry. Uh, this was not a good game for him. This was not like the Seth Curry that we got in 2016-17 in the starting lineup where he was 12.5 points and he was knocking down three threes per game on like five attempts or whatever it was. Uh, other guys, Maxi with eight and eight. Three of ten shooting, so not good for him there. Two of five on threes. Hardaway Jr. had, again, some nice plays and some bad plays. That's what he's going to do. He's ultimately going to, if you're lucky, he breaks even for you. That's kind of how I feel about Tim Hardaway Jr. right now. He had 11 points in 27 minutes. Uh, I already mentioned DeLon Wright, 12 points. Brunson, Brunson's another guy that's been very quiet overall in the year for the Mavericks. He's made some gutsy plays, but three points, one board, two assists, only 15 minutes, one of six shooting, one of two at the foul line. Uh, keynote, not a keynote, uh, tidbit. We did get the Boban debut finally, 11 minutes for Boban. Four points, seven boards, and assists. 205 shooting so I'm glad that we got to finally see him get some minutes uh he'll get a lot more the next few games for the Mavericks are going to be a lot more agreeable they're going to have matchups with teams like Memphis New York Orlando there's another one in there Cleveland they're going to have those four teams coming up and then they got Boston after those so Dallas still has a chance to kind of regroup again they're three and two on the season. Nothing to get bent out of shape over. They have played every game tough, and Luca, Luca, man, if he, if some people might have thought he had a slight slow start, which he has two triple doubles in five games, and damn near had a third, if not for one assist shy from just multiple guys missing opportunities to put him over the top. But if you thought Luca was starting slow, like some people did. You're not thinking that at this point because Luca just put the team on his back and carried them as far as he could. Field goal percentage in this game, LA shot 49%, Dallas shot 39%. That is the big difference. Dallas shot 39% on three, LA again 28%. Free throws, Dallas shot much better, 70%, but the ones they did miss, a couple of the ones they did miss hurt more than more than uh, you would like. Lakers 76% at the line. Dallas doubled the Lakers up on turnovers. 11 for the Lakers, 22 for the Mavericks. That's not good. Assist the Lakers slightly better, 24 to 23. Rebounds. Dallas out. Here, here is one of those things in the, the, the turnovers kind of explain it. 
the Dallas flipped the script tonight and out rebounded the Lakers by 20, 20, including 18 offensive rebounds. And you lost in overtime. It's, it's the failing to convert when you're not shooting threes. It's the turnovers and it's not as many, but you still had seven missed free throws. That's what decided it. Lakers much better protecting the boards or protecting the rim. Seven blocks to one equal on personal fouls. I'll say this. Luca's lucky. Luca's lucky. He didn't get teed up in this game because he was getting extremely, like I said, he was demonstrative through a lot of this game, whether it was him getting ridiculous fouls called against him in the first quarter or the first half. He picked up, you know, that charge then right before halftime on the last play for the Mavericks Pretty much the last play of the half, LeBron had like point four, just inbounded it and didn't even do anything with it. But he picked up a couple plays like that, and then yeah, he, there was no foul when he got clobbered on the back of the head by Dwight. That's incidental contact. That if anything, Dwight's just there, and Luca's who creates the contact because the collision with Dorian Finney-Smith causes Luca to recoil back, and then he bonks, like I said, the crown of his head. So I don't have any real issues on that. That is what it is. Uh, a couple times later, he gets smacked in the face or the chin. I think, I think there's some truth to the idea that after you've already been just crushed once and you don't feel like the refs are looking out for you, if you get nicked again, even if it doesn't have to be egregious, just enough to, you know, it, it, I don't want to say it rattles you, but it is a thing like, because you get hit again, it doesn't even have to be as egregious for you to still just be pissed off about it and I kind of felt like that was the case with Luca. he wanted that second call really bad and didn't get it and then like I said LeBron sees that the Mavericks are just kind of standing around stunned and he's like ah give me the ball Anthony Davis here you go up oh, dunk I didn't even mention uh I said earlier LeBron had himself a triple double LeBron James 43 minutes 39 points 12 rebounds and 16 assists 9 of 12 at the line there was a lot of bad stuff here. I'm not going to go on too much longer. I've already been going a long time. There was a lot of bad calls here. LeBron uh, got away with a lot of contact. When he drove, he could run over a guy. He had a, a drive in transition where he literally, you know, one of his fierce dunks in the game, he's literally with his right hand holding uh, Dorian Finney-Smith at bay, like not shielding him, like literally like, holding his arm to keep him away as he drives up the court and then dunks it. Uh, if he drove to the li- to the rim and spun but still went through the guy, it was pretty much every time allowed to, to stand as like, no, it's either a block or it's no call at all. And for the Mavericks, if it was Luka driving and then spinning, he was called for it, even though it was c- comparable and LeBron's a much bigger, stronger guy anyway. So you're like... If either, if either one of these guys barreled through someone, it's probably more so LeBron James, but whatever. Uh, his and one late in the game. I think it was actually in overtime. Yeah, in overtime. Utter garbage. He he gathers the ball. Pump fakes. Luka and KP go up. Both come down on his shoulders. LeBron is hunched over. And then as they slide off and land on their feet, he goes up and lays it in, and the ref calls continuation. And it's like, What? They land on top of him. He's bent over. And then as they're coming off, he goes up and lays it in and you call continuation. Like, that's not continuation. There were a lot of bad calls, but I don't want to take anything away from LeBron and Anthony Davis because they balled out. Like, they really did. Anthony Davis, in particular, he destroyed Dwight Powell in this game. 31 points for him, eight boards, Two assists, five or fifteen of twenty-eight shooting. Oh, a five on three. The three ball was not falling for him, but hey, credit to him. He adapted and he he took it to him. Two blocks, two steals. Yeah, he gave KP fits. It it sucks in terms of a, a duo matchup. You know, it, it wasn't duo versus duo so much as it was Luca versus LeBron and Anthony Davis. But it is what it is. Uh, Dwight Howard. 27 minutes, four points, eight boards, three blocks, two steals, and the most egregious non-called hold to force overtime uh, that I can remember in some time. I don't, 
I don't feel like I don't like blaming refs. I really don't. But I will say through five games this year, I can only think of one game where I kind of walked away like that was a well officiated game for the most part. Like not perfect because it's never perfect, but that was pretty good. Or at the very least, it felt consistent and even. I haven't really had that feeling <laughs> this year. And and then a lot of these critical, just ball breaking plays and calls are going against Dallas in their own house, weirdly. And so you're kind of like shaking your head like, what do we got to do here? Like, what do we have to do to get some of these calls? Luca, at this stage, with everything he's done, what does he have to do to get some of these superstar calls? Because good God almighty, are some of these other guys just getting all of the calls and Luca's getting called for tic-tac, like, oh, his, uh, his spin move off. No, I think he might have pushed. They show the replay. His arm's out. You don't see him really extend it. So, I don't know. It's like they're looking for it. Like, they've been told to look for it. Like, oh, yeah, he always pushes off when he does this move. And so the ref sees the arm at all. And he's like, ah, foul. Offensive foul. Going the other way. They're going to have to fix something. The The officiating has been abnormally bad this year. You know, they're looking to sniff out more travel calls. There's been a ton more travel calls made this year, which is good, and it's going to take the players some time to adapt, but it's like they're overlooking for it to an extent where some of these plays called travels, you're like, it's not a travel. Not even in the college level, not even in the high school level, let alone what NBA games have gotten away with uh, as recently as last year. So it, it's a it's a tough loss for the Mavericks. They're going to have to show a lot of character in bouncing back from this, but... I'm not I'm not uh I'm not disappointed in this team because take away uh an overtime period in which they still showed some guts they just were shell shocked at the start of it. Take that away and you look at what they accomplished against a very good opponent and there's a lot to hang your hat on for this game. This is a young team. They're going to have some growing pains. Luca and KP are going to have some growing pains as a duo. They're just going to have to overcome it. And you learn a lot from it. You learn more and sometimes in a defeat than you do in a win. And there's a lot to learn for some of these guys after this game. But it's a shame that uh, I feel like Luca had a gem of a game wasted here. But it is what it is. So I, I know I say that a lot, but it, it's true. At some point, it's just like, ah, well, whatever. What are you going to do? So... Mavericks have a little bit of time now. Let me check exactly when their next game is as I wrap this up. I believe Mavericks play next at Cleveland Sunday, 630. I don't think I'm going to have a game companion ready for that night, but I will do another one of these post-game videos after the game as well. So that's going to do it for my time here, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, remember... Every legend was once a prospect. Salute.